If you live in a home, inevitably, someone has to clean it. So whether you hire a professional to come in regularly, maybe you treat yourself to that occasionally, or maybe you're like me and you just have to do it yourself with the help of your family, these are my quick tips and habits to help you keep a clean home without spending a ton of money. My first tip is to run your dishwasher every night and empty it every morning. Once it's empty in the morning, that means that all throughout the day, they can simply be rinsed off and put directly into the dishwasher to be run later. I really try to keep my sink clear all throughout the day because once one dish is in there, everyone thinks they can put all the other dishes in there. If you don't have a dishwasher, of course you can hand wash throughout the day or if you do want to let it pile up, wash them all at night, let them air dry overnight and clear them and put them away in the morning. It just helps to keep the whole sink area clean and tidy which helps the whole space to feel more clean and put together. I also like to clean our white porcelain sink with Barkeeper's Friend. Sometimes we do get scratches from stainless steel or just food messes that are in there. So after rinsing it all out, I will sprinkle in some Barkeeper's Friend and scrub and buff those scratches with just a simple sponge. And it really gets them out completely. It really deep cleans the sink. And you can also do the same with a stainless steel sink. The second tip goes along with the first, and that is to simply own less things in your home. So in the kitchen, if you have less pots and pans, less utensils, less dishes, there is not as much that can pile up and things need to be washed before they can be reused instead of just grabbing a clean one because inevitably, all of it is going to have to be washed. So if you just own simply what you need and use and can get by on less, there's less that can get dirty and will have to be cleaned later on. This tip also applies to every other room in your home. If you have flat surfaces like your kitchen table, your dining room table, coffee table, a dresser in a bedroom, the less little tiny items that are cluttering up these surfaces, the less you'll have to clean around, the less that your kids can move around around and make a mess with or possibly break. So by keeping those surfaces as clear as possible throughout the day, they are always ready to be used. There is simply less inventory that you have to manage, which is something that Dawn from The Minimal Mom talks about all the time, how the inventory in our homes, we are the caretakers of. So by simply having less of it, it is less that can build up and make a mess. If you are in the season of raising small children, just remember that there is a difference between tidy and clean. So if you keep your house tidy throughout the day, then when you have those pockets of time to really do the deep cleaning, it is so much easier to just go in, wipe down, spray, clean, mop, whatever you need to do to get it clean when you don't have to first deal with the clutter and the tidying aspect, which again goes back to just simply having less, less toys, less decorative items that can can be moved around. When you have less and you stay on top of the tidying throughout the day, then the cleaning is that much easier to get to and complete. My next tip is that you can make a lot of DIY household cleaners yourself that will save you a ton of money. I make a DIY multi-purpose spray. I just use a 16 ounce spray bottle that was actually left over from an older cleaning product. I just took off the label after it was empty and now I just refill it on my own. I use a quarter cup of white vinegar and only about a half of a teaspoon of Blue Dawn or any really any dish cleaner that you have and fill the rest up up with just tap water and you mix that up put it in the spray bottle and I use that on our wood tables our butcher block countertops our oven you know anything really that's like a hard surface around our home uh, you might want to be careful on natural stone because it does have vinegar in it but that is an all-purpose spray that we use in most of the places in our home when it comes to clothing stains I like to keep spray and wash on hand just because it's so quick and easy and I can deal with those stains right Right away and that really helps to preserve them longer but if you do have some really set in stains or maybe you've gotten hand-me-down clothing 
from somebody. I like to make a DIY stain remover and I have made a video about this and called it a miracle stain remover because it really is amazing and can get out some really deep stains. To make it, you only need Blue Dawn peroxide and baking soda. So if you're going to make a, just a spot remover, you just need a small amount. You can do about a half of a teaspoon of each of those ingredients. Basically, you can scale this to any amount that you want to make. It's simply equal portions of each of those three ingredients. So for a spot remover, I would just mix it up, use an old cleaning toothbrush that we've demote and really scrub it into the stain and then let it sit for a few hours up to overnight if it's a really set in stain and then wash it as normal. And then I just check it when it comes out of the wash, make sure that the stain is out before drying. If the stain has only lightened and it needs to you know, have another treatment, I would just do it again, let it sit and then rewash it. And usually by the second time, any deep set in stain that I've ever had has gone out completely. And then the third DIY cleaner that I like to do is when I'm cleaning any of our technology screens, all you need is a damp rag. Just put a little bit of water on it, not too saturated, and then a couple squirts of just rubbing alcohol. And that makes a perfectly streak-free clean. No matter how many fingerprints are on the screen, it gets it all off and it's totally streak free. My next tip, if it takes one minute or less to do a task, just do it right then when you think of it. If there's a bottle of something that, you know, syrup has dripped down it or jelly is on the rim, just take the 10 seconds and wipe it down. You will thank yourself later on when everything's not crusty and gross. Or if you go into your kid's drawer to put their laundry away, you see that they've ruffled through it and it's a big mess, just take the five seconds to refold and rearrange them so that the next time it's not something that's gonna be frustrating to deal with when you're in a rush trying to get out the door. My next habit is to make your bed every single day. I know this is something that people talk about all the time and it truly does make such a difference in your day. I mean, people have written books about this topic. Throughout the day, if you go into your room, it's not like something that you notice and then your mind is like, are you gonna make it? Are you not gonna make it? I should make it, but I'm just gonna get into it later, so why should I? And it's like all these thoughts that go through your head where if you had just made it in the morning, you would walk by your room or walk into it and just be like, oh, that looks nice and go on with your day. You know, it takes you again, 30 seconds a minute tops and it really has bigger profound impact throughout your day. My next habit is that I do a load of laundry every single day. And to be honest, I probably do two loads of laundry every day between three children's clothing, my husband, myself, you know, sheets and towels and kitchen rags. I pretty much do two loads a day. And by staying on top of it, it's never a big task that I dread. It's just, I start my morning after I make my bed and do breakfast and all that. I throw in a load of laundry and then it's done and put away by the end of the day. It's never something that like rolls into my weekend that becomes a frustrating task that I have to spend all day doing. I know I have friends and family that do like to wait and just do it on one day. So if that works for you, totally do it. I know I touched on this before in a previous video, but we do use wool dryer balls in our dryer in lieu of dryer sheets because you only have to buy them once. They're pretty inexpensive. I did find mine at Walmart, but I know that Amazon carries them, so I'll put that in the link down below. And if you'd like, you can drip a few drops of essential oil into them if you want to add a little bit of natural fragrance to your clothes as they're drying. I don't use a ton of essential oils, but I do have a couple and another way you can use them. You can drip a few drops into your toilet paper roll into the cardboard part, just a couple drops so that every time that that is rolled and it sort of like gets the air moving, it gives that little bit of natural fragrance to the room. Another tip is that you can easily reuse old towels, old ratty t-shirts as cleaning rags in your home. There's really no need to ever buy towels that are specifically just for cleaning. I don't feel, you know, bad scrubbing the floor or like really deep cleaning something gross because it's something that was really on its last leg. You can easily cut them up and reuse them and it costs you nothing. My next tip is to use baking soda, which is very, very inexpensive to refresh your carpets and your area rugs. So you just sprinkle it on, let it sit, and then vacuum it up, and it will naturally deodorize and refresh those carpets. 
My next habit is that I like to wipe down the shelves of our refrigerator before we put in the new groceries. So we do order groceries for two weeks at a time. So by the end of the two weeks, the refrigerator is much more empty. So it's not such a big task to pull the remaining few things out and just wipe it down. And then when the new groceries arrive, you can just put them all in into a clean space. My next tip is that if you have a Keurig coffee maker, that's what we use for our coffee, you can descale it with simply using white vinegar. Fill it up with white vinegar and just run as many cycles through the machine with no coffee pot or anything so that it runs all of that vinegar through and gets it completely out and then refill the reservoir with water and run that again completely just so that you know that there's no vinegar left behind. It's not gonna you know, taste bad in your coffee or curdle your milk or anything. Just make sure that it is completely out and then it is descaled and will last a lot longer. And then my final habit is to do a 10 minute tidy every single night. When you are so tired from the day and doing dinner and cleaning up the kitchen and you just wanna crawl into bed, if there's any little things on the floor, just pick them up and gather them in one spot. We like having a basket in our hallway where if there's any little toys that are left behind or books or anything, we can just collect them all and put them in that basket and we can empty it in the morning since they're usually in bed at that time. Or you can put something on your kitchen table, your dining room table that just kind of collects the random things throughout, you know, that may gather throughout the day. You don't really want to deal with them at night when you just want to go to bed. Putting them in one spot so that it's all contained, again, it just looks tidier and then you can deal with it all at once. So those are my tips and habits for keeping a clean home. Again, like I've said, I have three small children. My home is not perfectly clean all the time. We very much live in our house. It gets very messy, but we do try to stay on top of it. We try to own less so there's less to actually be able to make a mess and then we try to find homes for everything so that at the end of the day or in the middle of the day we want to do a tidy everything has somewhere to actually go so i hope you enjoyed hearing these tips and if you are new here and we've never met my name is hillary welcome to old world home be sure to stick around and subscribe i do love to share all about our home projects we're doing organizing and then this whole month of february has been deemed frugal February. So I'm sharing a lot of money saving tips and things like that. So if that is something you're interested, be sure to stick around. I have plenty more to share this month and I'll be seeing you then. Take care guys. Bye.